Hey there, what's up guys? My name is Caleb. Thank you for tuning into my channel today. It's been a while since I've uploaded a video, but today we are going to be talking about the Capital Sentry Denim, and I'll be going over my review of the different Sentry Denim pieces I have, and as well as telling you about what all the different numbers and codes mean, trying to decipher kind of the way they code their fits, and as well as the different materials they use. So first things first, we can go over what Capital is and kind of explain the Sentry Denim. So originally when they were created by their initial founder, whose name I don't quite remember, but I'll have posted here, um, he created the brand with more of an intention towards reproduction and eventually the brand kind of moved more towards this artsier and um, more unique aesthetic that it has now. If you want a more in-depth guide on that, the video on Capital by the Casual is a great background to get. He delves into the Century Denim a little bit within that video, but he mainly gives you a main overview of the history and the ethos behind the brand. Um, I kind of think that's a great partner video to watch according with this video and uh, kind of help you decide whether or not the buy-in for these pieces is worth it for you. So when we're talking about the pieces that I have owned or I currently own, currently I own two Century Denim pieces. The first one is gonna be this first jacket, which is what it's called. And this is basically a Sentry Denim version of a Levi's Type 1. As you can see, this one is in the Kakishibu uh, persimmon dye. And so what that means is if you look here at the base part of the denim, it is dyed with persimmons and then the, the over stitches are dyed with indigo. You can see on the back here, it has the cinch and these creases as well as in the front. It has the singular pocket and the three pleats. In addition to that jacket, I just recently received this pair of the mud dyed Century Denim. I've been wearing these quite often, but only for about a week. Um, one thing with these is that they are known to fade extremely quickly, as you can kind of see in the butt here. We'll go more in depth on each of the pieces later. And then separately from both of those pieces, I have also owned another pair of Century Denim, which is the ink dye, which was the same exact fit as these, which is the wide fit. However, I did own them in a bigger size and they look quite different once you see them, at least uh, the way you wear them with the ink dye and the ink dye has a indigo over dye. So the first thing I wanna talk about when you're looking at the different fits for these, um, specifically first with the jeans, there's gonna be two, two or now three fits for the Century Denim jeans. Um, one of them, as far as I know, is only available in, in Japan currently, and it's a very new one. It's gonna be a flared or like a, um, a bell-bottom fit, and you can tell that because when you look at the jeans and you look down the front, they have a crease that runs down the front of them. That's not what this fit is, but they'll have this crease running down and they have the wider bell-bottom fit. You can get those proxied or sent from Japan, but currently I don't know if there are any stores that sell that in the US. This is the wide fit, um, and it's not actually all that wide of a fit. It's more like a true straight fit. For me, who's someone who's really into reproduction jeans, when I first tried them on, I kind of felt like I was wearing skinny jeans, especially since the fabric is so thick. And then even skinnier than that, they have more of a regular, like a slim straight fit, which is what they call their straight fit. And that's definitely the most contemporary or modern look. And then I would say these are the best for anyone looking for a wider, more reproduction fit. And anyone who's looking for something more unique can kind of go towards that flair. When it comes to jackets, the two main styles they're gonna have is this one I have here, which is the first jacket. And this one is based off the Levi's Type 1. And then they will also have, I'll post up a picture here. It's called the Westerner jacket. And I believe that one is based off of the Lee Stormrider jacket. I actually really like that one. I would like to get that one in the future um, in a different fabric, maybe the ink fabric or even the double indigo fabric or the light blue and indigo fabric. In addition to those two main jacket styles and those three main pants styles, they do a couple other uh, pieces with Century Denim here or there but mainly those are gonna be the main pieces that they're gonna put out season after season. They've also done a few one-off pieces. I'll put some pictures here or at least less frequent uh, pieces that aren't as much of a main part of their catalog. So my first experience with the Capital Century Denim came when I bought a pair of the Sumi ink dyed with the Indigo Overstitch Century Denim, which is kind of the most iconic pair. Um, I'll post a picture of me wearing an outfit with them here. This is like the only picture I have for some reason. And then I can post some other pictures of them more specifically. 
When I first bought these, um, I was just getting into more heritage and classic style. And so because of that, uh, they actually felt extremely wide to me. I also had bought these, I was more overweight than I am now, and I had bought them a size up. So I originally bought these in a size 36, and I felt like they fit me really, really wide. And at the time, I think they were just a little bit too out there for my style. And the gray pair, or any of the pairs where it pairs one of the lighter color denims with a darker overstitch kind of makes it more obvious. And after a while, I kind of just wanted to transition into something else, so I ended up selling them. Um, unfortunate that it is a bit unfortunate because I would like to have those a lot more right now um, But it is what it is. The second piece I got was this jacket. Um, I had, at the time I had to sell my mr. Freedom ranch blouse because I bought it too tight And so I really needed a light jacket All I had was my mr. Freedom blue jacket and like a sweatshirt and nothing in between and so I kind of needed a good transitional piece especially as the weather was warming up during the day, but it was still cold at night and so at the beginning of the year I bought myself this jacket and I've had this since pretty much the beginning of 2023 and I haven't put a ton of wear on it. I've worn it um, just about any time it can warrant wearing a light jacket. I wore it all throughout my trip to New York when I could in March, um, but it ended up being a lot colder than I'm used to <laughs> in New York City in March. Um, I wasn't used to it. I'm used to it being like 70 or 80 degrees and it was a little bit colder than that when we were there. So I mostly ended up wearing my other jacket, but there is still a decent amount of wear on this. Um, I'll probably end up doing a separate video on each of these going over how these different fabrics fade. And then my final piece is this mud dyed pair right here. And I've only had these for about two weeks and I've been wearing them off and on, trying to wear them as much as I can. It's pretty hot here during the California summer. So I'm really trying to, you know, give myself a day to take a break and then go and wear them for another day, try to get those hot summer sweaty fades in them. And so this is dyed, as far as I'm aware, this is dyed with, these are sulfur dyed black denim and then they have the mud dyed stitches on top of them. In addition to this, I'd already kind of gone over it, but the other options for the fabrics are going to be an indigo and indigo pair, which is all dark blue. Um, I like this a lot. I think these look extremely wearable. And then there will also be the light blue and indigo pair. And I would have to check to see what the light blue denim is dyed with. I might be indigo, I'm not sure. I'll let you guys know. Um, and I like those as well. I feel like out of all the options, those might be the hardest to wear, although I'm not really sure. I'd have to buy them and try them out to really let you know. So when it comes to pricing for all the pieces, um, a big part that's gonna determine your pricing for these is going to be the fabric that you pick and then also where you choose to buy them from. So Capital is one of the famous Japanese brands that is way more expensive over here in the States than it is over in Japan. And so because of that, if you can locate someone who can proxy these for you, you can actually get them for significantly cheaper than you can buy them in America. But I actually have bought a few of my pieces from places in America. The first place I bought my ink dyed pair of Century Denim from was Manhattan NYC and they sell a ton of different capital stuff as well as some other brands. I bought my jacket from Blue and Green online. I believe it was during a sale, although I'm not 100% sure. And then finally this pair here I got proxied to me and it was from a pretty reputable proxy and it's pretty crazy. I was able to get these sent to me for a steal. They were about 50% more expensive to buy in America than they were to get proxied and that included shipping and the guy going to the store and buying them and all that kind of stuff. And so that's a pretty awesome opportunity if you can find someone to do that for you online. So generally at the low end, when you're buying some of the more normal pairs of, nor normal and quote pairs of Century Denim, which I think are mainly just gonna be the ink dyed and the persimmon dyed pairs, you're gonna be looking at paying for a pair of the jeans in America from a retailer about $400. And then ranging up there from the other three ones, the mud, the double indigo and the single indigo, I think you're looking more around six to $700 a pair, depending on what um, where you get them from. Specifically, there are some stores that sell them for more and some stores that sell them for less, um, as well as you know whether or not you choose to wait and try to get them on a sale or something like that. Overall, this I believe is only a 12 or 11 ounce fabric before it has the stitches run through it. And so because of that, you would think it's gonna be a light fabric and it's actually not that hot, but it is extremely stiff. Just to provide you with an example, these are not super skinny and you can see how crisp and uh, strong all the honeycombs are here on the back of these. 
and recently I've been getting into not cuffing my pants as much and so you can even see down here there are, I hope you can see there are creases right here from the light stacking that's happening and that's just because of how stiff this fabric is and I bought these in a size 34 as opposed to the size 36 I had previously owned and these definitely fit a bit slimmer than the other pair uh, although they did stretch out quite a bit and so because of that, um, these are creasing a little bit more than my first pair did. Here on this jacket, you can see it has a much looser fit. And so even somewhere where you would normally see a lot of creasing, like in the sleeves, even with this stiff fabric, there's almost no creasing, as you can see. Um, there's nothing super considerable. On this sleeve, it's a little bit more uh, visible, I believe. And then in the back, you can see just because I wear this and lounge around in it, it has some creases in the back here. I would imagine that when it comes to the jackets that the westerner style which looks to be a lot slimmer and a lot less boxy than the first jacket i think would probably crease and fade within those creases a lot more especially along the kind of indigo lines um, because of that slimmer fit so if that's what you're looking for that could definitely be something to push you more towards the slimmer and a little bit more modern uh, lee style silhouette versus the more traditional levi's type one silhouette so one quick final overview. Um, I did say I was gonna tell you guys about the fit and the numbering systems. And so um, I'm gonna put up a little chart that I'll make right here and it'll kind of explain what the different fits are, but I will also quickly um, off the top of my head go over what the different fits are just to remind you. So I don't remember the exact name, but there's the flare fit for the pants, then the monkey Cisco fit. It's a weird naming convention, but that is going to be, when you see monkey Cisco, that is gonna be the wide fit. When you don't see monkey Cisco on the pants, then that's gonna be the slim fit or the slimmer fit, at least in relation to how the monkey Cisco fit is. Occasionally it'll say wide, occasionally it won't. What you really should be doing to make sure you're 100% getting what you want is looking at the measurements, which is kind of what you should be doing anytime. And as a quick reminder for these pants, you always wanna size up by one size because they are always small. So for example, if you are a 32, you should buy a 34 because the 34 uh, from Capital is gonna actually have the 32 inch waist measurement. Um, but hopefully that'll make it easier for you guys to understand because it's not the most clear thing. Um, I would say definitely check for any specific piece you want across all the different websites you can find because everybody's website kind of has a different explanation. Um, I found, for example, when you look at Standard and Strange versus Blue and Green versus Manhattan and even a few other places, they all kind of have different descriptions and they all have different little nuggets that make it a lot more useful to understand um, exactly what the coloring or the dyeing or the materials or any of the specific processes are for these. And I can go more in depth of those when I do reviews on each of these specific pieces to, ex to explain that to you more clearly. It was a final quick takeaway. Um, I do wanna go over a pretty big caveat for these, which is gonna be the price. Um, as you can see in this quick little review, these are pretty special jeans and jackets and a very special fabric. It's my understanding that uh, no one really knows how to reproduce these in the exact way that Capital does. And so it makes these a very unique and special product. And because of that, they can definitely charge a surplus. You're looking at um, high three to $400, even buying a lot of these pants directly from Japan through a proxy service. Um, and that's pretty expensive, especially for um, a normal person who's not used to paying high prices for jeans, and even for someone who is used to buying really nice jeans. Um, there aren't that many brands that are selling pants for above $300. So it's definitely something to consider whether or not these are worth it for you. Personally, I think these are such a unique and beautiful piece. I just see being able to wear these forever. Um, I really wish I had kept my initial pair. I wear this black pair all the time. I wear my jacket literally all the time and I hope to continue to gather even more Century Denim pieces. Honestly, I wouldn't be opposed to having like uh, at least one of each of the jackets and one of the, the pants in every single color. Um, I think that'd kind of be a cool goal for me. I don't know, I don't wanna to get too hyped up on it right now and jump down a rabbit hole I'm not prepared for. But um, these are definitely all really expensive and I think ultimately what it's gonna come down to is whether or not these are cool enough to you. And then separately, another big thing to worry about is whether or not you're actually gonna wear them. I honestly think for a lot of people, if you're not willing to kind of stick to your guns and wear a piece that can be as weird or as loud or as interesting as these can be, especially in some of the lighter or the brighter colors like the ink dye or the light blue dye, 
then you might have an issue wanting to wear them all the time with these darker like the indigo on indigo or the kakishi boo or this mud dye all those pairs are definitely a lot more quiet and easier to wear and a little bit more muted and so it kind of takes this really textured and loud fabric and kind of tones it back with a lighter color but then with the ink dye and the light blue you're also getting a lighter brighter color and that really uh, loud fabric and so because of that that's something you really have to consider whether or not these are going to be wearable if you say yeah i'm definitely going to wear these a lot then i honestly don't see how you'd be uh, mad at yourself for spending money on these these are such amazing pants and jackets and just pieces in general but if you don't see yourself confidently being able to wear these pretty often um, unless you just have a lot of disposable income and 400 bucks isn't that much to you which is uh, not a lot of people i know but i'm sure there's some of you guys out there then uh, go ahead and get them but you know if not if this is going to be a little bit too much for you then it's certainly there's tons of other pieces that are amazing uh, for not so intensive a price point and there's also lots of other brands that make similar uh, sashiko style fabrics which are usually pretty expensive as well just because and creating a unique fabric like this um, takes a lot of time and effort and you have to pay for that but uh, you can I think there might be some more affordable pairs like from Naked and Famous although I'm not sure if they're doing any at this time uh, beyond that I'm not really sure of anything specific at the moment so that was just my quick overview of the Century Denim by Capital, kind of explaining to you my experience with them, whether or not I think they're worth it, uh, how to get them, what the pricing is, all the fits. Um, I thought this would kind of be a good guide for people who are interested and looking forward to looking into a pair or getting a pair to kind of come to and be able to get a good general uh, information. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I had fun making it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it and got a lot of use out of it. Have a great time. I'll see you next time.